Nebraska. He suffered a sore knee from the Missouri game, but he has recovered from that knee injury, and he will play today in fine battle. His opportunity, as I said, came when I am hip was injured in the second game of the season. And I am hip, of course, became a star at Nebraska almost as suddenly as Jarvis Redwine. He showed up from Chapin, South Carolina, his first airplane ride. He borrowed money from his girlfriend's mother to come to Nebraska to play college football. And Isaiah Moses Hip did not get an athletic grant in aid until his sophomore season. Two years ago, when he first pulled on that red shirt and took the football under his arm, everybody in Nebraska said, holy cow, where has this fellow been? Where did he come from? Who is he? Well, he was thought to be a Heisman Trophy candidate in his junior and senior year. It hasn't quite worked that way for him because of a succession of physical problems. Bill Fleming talked yesterday to him. Isaiah, as you reflect back now on the senior year of yours, I'm, I'm sure that there have to be moments of great disappointment for you. Well, yes, uh, say for example, this year has been somewhat a disappointment, but no, not totally disappointed. But uh, say coming in the season, uh, I expect myself to do pretty well. In the second game of the season, I injured my foot and somewhat everything went downhill. Well, not only did your career particularly, but also in, in terms of, of what happened to your replacement. He came sweeping in, Jarvis Redwine, and it must be kind of tough to sit on the bench and see that guy going out there going crazy. Well, it's not that tough. I mean, it, it, it's just that you want to fight, you know, together as a team and try to reach a goal that we always talked about as a team to reach. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, that goal is to uh, get to the National and play in the Orange Bowl. And uh, I think we uh, have a possible chance of doing that uh, if we can win tomorrow. Now, is the toe 100%? Yes, it is 100%. And you're going to start? Yes. There is another great running back on the other side, Billy Sims, who has set all kinds of records for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll have a look at Billy, and we'll have a visit with him right after this. Running backs at Oklahoma football history plays his final game in Norman today. His name is already firmly planted in the history of Oklahoma football, and there are thousands of memories in a legend-rich college football program that you can hang on to this young man. He came here from Hooks, Texas, to become Oklahoma's third Heisman Trophy winner. He won it as a junior last season. He could conceivably win a second Heisman this year. He has scored 22 touchdowns in 10 games this season to lead Division I-A scoring. He has run for 1,259 yards, averaging nearly six and a half yards per carry. He is the staple in the Sooner offense. Only Texas has been able to handle him this year, and that's the only game the Sooners have lost. I remember one time his coach Barry Switzer said about him, the kid thinks he can fly. Yesterday, I talked with Billy Sims. Billy, the last big game for the Big Red. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, last week I had a good game against Missouri. And uh, hopefully I can have a better one against Nebraska. They're a tough physical team all the way around. So uh, we're going to have to keep the ball off the ground in order to uh, put some points on the uh, scoreboard. You came into 1979 with a Heisman Trophy on the shelf at home. Do you feel you have had a Heisman Trophy kind of a year in 1979? I think so. Uh, due to the fact with a young and inexperienced team, uh, I'm very much satisfied the way the season went as a whole, even though I didn't... Uh, get the yardage like I did last year. I'm, right now I'm leading in uh, scoring, so I'm very pleased with that. You did not play, in some instances, an entire half, or you could have accumulated a lot of yardage. That's true. Uh, a few games, about three or four, I guess, kind of got out of hand where they uh, pulled me back out, you know, pulled me out of the game and let the younger players play, which they deserve a right to play some, too, because they have to be here every day and work out just like I do. So there's really no sense in me playing a whole game when we're beating somebody about 20 or 30 points. Obviously, you'd like to have a second Heisman. Oh, yeah, but uh, I'm not selfish. I have one, the one I got I'm very proud of. So uh, the case, you know, opportunity to present itself again to receive it again, I'll be back in New York to accept it. You made an observation during our travels in the summer that you thought perhaps Oklahoma football fans might be a little spoiled, which got your mailman in a whole lot of trouble because it needed an extra truck to bring it to your house. Has that subsided now? I think so. Uh, you know, I'll sort of elaborate on that. I really wasn't uh, cutting down our fans because we have a lot of terrific fans with just a few uh, bad letters that I had received. But overall, you know, that's all under the water now. And I've done a, you know, had a complete, uh, pretty good season for them. I think they're back on my side again. Well, I think one of the things that might be said on this too, Billy, is Oklahoma fans are spoiled because they haven't had a loser in so long they wouldn't know what to do with it if they had one. 
Well, you know, we sort of the blame, you know, for ourselves, a team like Oklahoma, the tradition that they have will spoil anybody, even myself. <laughs> so uh, we just have to play along with that. Good luck, Billy. Okay, thank you, Keith. We'll have more in just a moment. He's at the top of the picture. Back judge has just gone over to Howdy with him. And we're ready to go. I guess that would be the referee down at that end of the field and receiving. Keith Jackson and Frank Broyles. The wind is gusting up to 15 plus miles an hour. And again, to reiterate so much on the line here today, Nebraska undefeated. The winner goes to the Orange Bowl to play undefeated Florida State. The loser goes to the Cotton Bowl. As Jim Brock said, can't you call them the runner up? They will play the Southwest Conference champion. So there really is not going to be a loser as far as postseason play is concerned. But quiet is something else as Keeling hangs the ball high and it goes to Anthony Steeles. And Steeles breaks out of there and he gets into the loose and he's on his way all the way to the 44 yard line. Jay Jimerson, number 15, kept him from breaking that one all the way. Let's watch it again. We will see that the ball is set up beautifully by the blockers. And the one thing that Oklahoma did not want was to give Nebraska a chance to get out in good field position. Steele makes an outstanding run before Jemison, number 15, brings him down. They come up now with Andra Franklin and I am hit, set behind Quinn, the quarterback. Quinn still got it. Gets out to the left side into the open field. He gets a couple of blocks to get him around the corner, and he runs for a first down. Going from the 44-yard line all the way down to the Oklahoma 43. Here are the young men who are in the backfield. That's Jeff Quinn making his second start since the Iowa game. Andrew Franklin, big, heavy, set, good-looking fellow who's a heck of a blocker. I am hip, you know. Kenny Brown, a very dangerous, good football player. And Tim Smith, the split in who doubles as the punter. So here's Nebraska operating at the Oklahoma 43. First down, Brown goes in motion, and Hip has the ball. Notice that little skipping, slipping, sliding kind of motion he has. He just dances at you, and then bang, he's gone. Big Junior Miller, said by some the best tight end in the country. Mark Goodspeed, 260 pounds. John Havkos, 230-pound guard. Kelly Saulfeld, 248 at center. Randy Schleusner, 232 at guard. Dan Steiner, 238 at tackle. Second down and seven. The ball is inside the 40. Hip again. And I am hip to the 35. He needs a couple of yards for the first down. They'll be looking at third as we begin another Titanic between the Sooners and the Huskers. Defensively for Oklahoma, Barry Burgett, Keith Gary, John Lewis, Richard Turner, and Bruce Tayton. Linebackers and defensive backs, George Cumbie, Barry Dittman, Basil Banks, Mike Babb, Sherwood Taylor, and Bud Hebert. Taylor is out. Riley is in right now as the Sooners set up a goal line defense on third down and two, trying to stop Nebraska right here. The ball is handed off. It is kept, however, by the quarterback. He put the ball in the fullback Franklin's belly, pulled it out and kept it, and George Cumbie was right there to bang him. So let's have a look as they move the chains for a Nebraska first down. Here's Cumbie, 28. Cumbie is All-American this year, was All-American as a sophomore. He recognizes the play immediately, fires through the line, and takes on Quinn, but you can see the strength of Quinn diving for the first down. We are so high here at uh, atop Owen Field in the press area that you can see the curvature of the earth. <laughs> Quinn turns. He's going to put it up. He's got some heat. Down he's still not down now he is all the way back at the 46 yard line and the Sooners red pass all the way Keith Gary got away from the blocking and blew in for a 13 yard loss that is the one thing Keith that the offense wants to avoid getting down into four down territory and yet gets tackled for a 13 yard loss on first down it changes their strategy completely that's the risk of throwing a deep pass on first down Great play then by Keith Gary, number 72. Now it is second down from the 45 of Oklahoma. They've got to go to the 22 to get the first down. They give the ball to the eye back, and Hip's got a yard, and that'll do it. Keith Gary again, a junior out of Washington, D.C., on the tackle for the Sooners. 
So it's now third down and long, and they're working into a very brisk breeze. Keith, I think we should mention that Junior Miller, the tight end, has got to be a prominent factor for Nebraska in this ball game. Oklahoma has their linebackers right up in the line, and the way to attack that scheme of defense is with your tight end and wing back. Smith comes wide right. Brown goes wide left. Keep your eye on 89. He's the biggest man, tallest man out on the field. Then back to throw it. He swings it out to hip. Hip's got two blockers in front of him. But he goes down at the 42-yard line as George Cumby, number 28, again makes an outstanding defensive play. So that'll bring up fourth down, and it's going to bring up a punt for Nebraska. This from the end zone, you can see it's a screen pass out to the left to hip. George Cumby, number 28, outstanding football player, twice All-American, offensive fullback, makes the hit, brings hip down to the earth. Here's the punt by Smith, hung up into the wind. There'll be no return as it goes banging to the sidelines and out of bounds. So that's going to work out all right. It was a 29-yard punt. But it's inside the 20, marked down around the 13-yard line with J.C. Watts opening that quarterback. Billy Sims will be one of the halfbacks out of the wishbone formation. David Overstreet, a junior from Big Sandy, Texas, the other halfback. Stanley Wilson, freshman fullback, and Freddie Nixon, one of the wide receivers. Sometimes you'll see two wide receivers in for Oklahoma. But right now, the Sooners are ready to go as Cumbie gets some rest, and George earned his supper already, didn't he? J.C. Watts brings him up now as they break the bone and uh, put a man in motion, give the ball off inside to Wilson, the fullback, and he goes from the 13-yard line up to about the 16. The defensive unit for Nebraska lines up, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the offensive front for Oklahoma, 82 is Forrest Valora, Louis Obre from New Orleans, big tackle, 250, Terry Crouch, 242 at guard, Paul Tabor, the center, 242, Don Key is the guard at 245, a freshman, Ed Culver, 253 at tackle. Well, they're plenty big up front. It is second down and seven for the Sooners. And it is Sims cutting over the right side. And the right side of the line gave him a great block. Key and Culver and Valora. And they turn him up across the 26 to the 27 for a first down. Now we can give you the defense for Nebraska. Lawrence Cole, Rod Horn, Kerry Weinmester, Bill Barnett, and Derry Nelson. The linebackers, Brent Williams, Tom Varing. The secondary, Lindquist, Means, Gary, and Leroy. And that secondary is pretty good. First down for the Sooners at their own 27, no score, first quarter. And penalty flags are down. I think the man in motion might have turned up field a little bit too soon that time, Frank. He appeared to, Keith, and that's a mistake that Oklahoma cannot afford to make on this end of the field. No, nope, the, the Oklahoma people are clapping their hands like it's offside against Nebraska, and that's what it is. The wishbone, Keith, as we've said many times, is an offense that has many possibilities for mistakes. The triple option requires such speed and precision that you leave the ball on the ground. And Oklahoma has fumbled 52 times this year already. So they're guarding against it on this end of the field early in the ball game. And the fumble was such a, an important factor in the struggle they had up at Lincoln last year on that cold day, 17 to 14 win by the Huskers. We're at 288 feet down to the sidelines from where we're sitting. That's why I made the comment about being so I've got high. a nosebleed. <laughs> First and five, wants to throw it, puts it in the air. The pass is incomplete. Number 34 coming across, Andy Means. Bobby Grayson, number 12, was the wide receiver out there. It'll be second down and five. The football is at the 32 of Oklahoma. Barry Switzer. And in the 70s, it was well advertised a couple of weeks ago that Alabama had won 100 games in the 70s. Well, so has Oklahoma. Second man, Sim. He's gone. Goodbye. flag is thrown back at the 15 yard line you know there might have been a clip Clip, Keith you can't believe it Valora was trying to get away from the back defensive back means knowing that he had the touchdown scored and he accidentally bumped into him clipping penalty very much unintentional as Valora was trying to escape from him what a tough break for Oklahoma 68 yard run Billy Sims got past the line of scrimmage there wasn't anybody in this whole county going to catch him from the end zone, we can see the blocking. Watch Sims. 
We see exactly why he's so outstanding. He cuts right back, and he's got an open field because the secondary is playing so close. Now, watch in the left corner of your screen. Hopefully, we can see the unintentional clip. The Oklahoma lineman right there was trying to get out of his way and accidentally bumped into him. Tough break, Keith. So instead of six points, and for Billy Sims, a career-tying touchdown, his 23rd, which would tie him with Steve Owens, he gets a 38-yard uh, total on the run, and it's first down Oklahoma at the Nebraska 30-yard line. So the Huskers dodge a bullet. Watts going down the line on the option, turns it to about the 28 before he's knocked down by Tom Varing, number 47. Let's look at the bottom of the screen at Maybe we can see the clip that brought the touchdown back, assessed the 15-yard penalty just to the right of your screen. You can see he, I saw the play, he was accident, he accidentally bumped into it. You can't see it completely. He was trying to avoid it. And accidentally, it was Freddie Nixon, number 11. Call it the 29, make it second down and about nine as Watts comes back to put it up, has all day, goes deep in the corner, and the pass is intercepted in the corner by Andy Means, and Nebraska has the football back. So Oklahoma loses a touchdown. Andy Means comes up with an interception on the overthrown pass, and the Huskers are back in business. First down at their own 20 and no score. Freddie Nixon isolated, going into the corner of the end zone. J.C. Watts' pass is thrown too deep, and Andy Means drifting, playing center field here, just goes back and makes the catch. Keep it in mind that Means has deep responsibility. He did not take the fake in the flat, Keith, and obviously he has a decided advantage at the point of the pass coming down. Franklin and Hip set up behind Quinn. With Smith, wide right, round the wing back, and it goes to Hip. I am hip, gets a couple. Here's a play that they're going to be talking about a long time. Billy Sims is home free with the first touchdown of the ball game, and there's number 11, Freddie Nixon, coming across, and he runs into Andy Means and hits him from the back, and it's a clip, and back comes the touchdown, and as then came the pass interception, and the Sooners were turned away empty. 8.34 to go in the first quarter of play. Again, out of the eye on second down. Let's give him eight yards to go from just outside the 22. And it is Hip. And Hip pops it up across the line of scrimmage where he runs into 38 Dittman and 33 Hebert. And he got pretty good yardage that time out to the 38-yard line. It'll bring up third down, two. Keith Nebraska's offensive rushing for the year is number one total offense. They're number two in the nation and number three in scoring with 35 points a game. That's Jarvis Redwine is now in there at the eye back position for the first time we've seen him today, Frank, and he's added 977 yards to that total. He's the fastest back that they have at Nebraska. He's got it. He's outside. He's got the first down. And then some. All the way out to the 48-yard line, where Basil Banks just barely got it. Good block that time from that big tight end, Junior Miller, number 89. From the end zone, watch the blocking at the line, and then pick up Redwine going outside, and you'll see that Dittman, number 38, misses the tackle, coming right here. The linebacker misses the tackle, and then finally Banks brings him down. It's a marvelous name, Jarvis Redwine. First down, 48-yard line of Nebraska. No score, first quarter, seven and a half minutes to go. Quinn turns around, looks for somebody, and then turns it upfield. I don't know if it was a broken play or whether he had the option there to keep it. Whatever, he got the ball over to the Oklahoma 48-yard line. Good smart play by Quinn. He had the option. Oklahoma had shifted their defense to the wide side of the field. Nothing there. The best thing you can do is follow your faking back and get what you can. down and six from the 48 of Oklahoma. Red line. And he hits with some authority on the right side as he gets the football down close to the 43. Johnny Lewis in that middle guard position, a sophomore out of Carroll City, Florida. There are your national rushing numbers, and you can see that Nebraska and Oklahoma are one and three. Redwine now for the season has gone past a thousand yards. A thousand and one for Redwine. 
He's a junior. Yes, he's back next year. Third down, about two. Big guy Franklin hit at the line of scrimmage. There's no way he's going to get it. As a matter of fact, the defensive penetration might have cost him a yard. That was a sensational effort by the Oklahoma defense. Number 28, Cumbie lines up right in the gap and charges through and tackles Franklin for a loss. Watch him shoot the gap. It's a cross charge. He comes. No one picks him up. And he tackles Franklin for a loss and forcing the punt. Smith will do the punting and Basil Banks will do the receiving for Oklahoma. Beautiful kick. Beautiful spinning spiral. Forcing Banks to call fair catch inside the 10-yard line. So Oklahoma, after a 37-yard punt, is backed up on its eight yard line. There is no score. There's the time. They will move it up and down the field. It is first down at the eight yard line of Oklahoma. And Wilson, the fullback, is in motion. And penalty flags are all over the field as the gain is out beyond the 15 to the 17 yard line. But they'll bring that one back, I suspect. Billy Sims carried the ball. So Billy's having a hard time today. He's picking up yardage, but he's been wiped out by mistakes. Mistakes in the offensive line all year long. Uh, Oklahoma, they are young, they have a freshman and two sophomores in that offensive line. That only brings the ball back to the board. They've got a lot of freshmen on this football team, which if they should win here and go on to win in a bowl game, probably would put them among the three or four teams in the country to be considered uh, number one for next year. The ball is marked back inside the five to the four. And it'll be first down and about 13. Ball is handed off to Billy Sims. Sims gets to the five just across it where he is gang tackled. Horn and Weinmester are amongst those getting a hold of Billy. There's an idea of just uh, looking at the, the first uh, the two deep for Oklahoma and how young they are. Amazing thing is that Nebraska has only one player on the top 22 listed in the lower class than a junior. Ball is just over the five, where it is second down at about 12. J.C. Watts hands the ball off to Sims, and Bill is in the open again. And he runs that football out across the 20-yard line and gets a first down for the Oklahoma Sooners. In the middle of the line, had to be some pretty good blocking there. Watch it from just, you can see exactly what Sims sees with number 73, Tabor, blocking Winemaster, past the hole, the counterplay, look at the gaping hole that Sims has, and he breaks right in the secondary. And it's a mismatch when he gets there. He's fast and stronger than any of the Nebraska backs. For 17 yards, four carries, 68 total for Billy. First down Sooners. Ball goes to the first man out of the wishbone, Stanley Wilson, the freshman fullback from Carson, California. He's really not that big, 193 pounds. He's backed up by Wilson Led Weldon Ledbetter, who's another freshman. He's a 210 pound. So that Wilson is really explosive. That's what the coaches say, Keith. He has the quick start that you have to have on the wishbone. You've got to get past that first phase very, very quickly. He gained three, second down and seven for Oklahoma. It's Wilson again. And he's got a first down before he is thrown out of bounds up around the 40-yard line. Again, good blocking inside. Paul Tabor, the center, 73, and Terry Crouch, 75, the left guard. Paul Tabor is all big gate. Let's watch the block that he puts on Winemaster. This is what we call a, a scramble block. He is leading Winemaster very much to the left, and he can't get into the play. Lee is the nose guard instead of Winemaster. Big play for Oklahoma. Lee's in there at 224 pounds. He's bigger than Winemaster. Turn and hand the ball off inside to Billy Sims, and Sims moves it from the 40 out close to the 43. And we've got three minutes and 55 seconds to go in the first quarter, and we have no score. The numbers on the Oklahoma running backs. Now, Keith, that's, that's, wow. that's how the wishbone operates. It's a ball possession type offense with big play opportunities. Once the back breaks the line of scrimmage, normally there's no backs there, no defensive backs there to make the tackle. Second down, short eight, long seven. Sims has got it. Sims across the 45, out to the 46. Jumping in there is Brent Williams, number 66. All right, let's go! go. Let's, go. let's watch the 66, Brent Williams, a linebacker. All he's doing is keying Billy Sims. He moves right across and fills the hole and 
wrestles him to the ground. Ball is up on the 46 yard line. They need four yards for the first down. They're looking at third down. With the clock running now inside three minutes in the first quarter. Watts still got it in trouble. Number 55 came across to slow him down. That's Rod Horn. And then coming in to make the tackle is number 23, Mark Leroy, who's a senior out of Seattle. And they are short of the first down on that loss. So it'll bring up an Oklahoma punt. Michael Keeling, a freshman from Dallas, will do the punting. The deep men, Kenny Brown and Anthony Steeles. He's got the wind at his back. He knocked it a mile. Ball is taken by Kenny Brown. Brown back to the 16-yard line. It was a 45-yard punt. Billy Sims now taking a rest on the sidelines. 2-12 to go first quarter and no score. Pack Towns at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. Yep, that real blue sky in the background. That big storm that came down out of the eastern Rockies swept on up north. Pounded uh, the folks up in the Nebraska region with some snow and heavy weather. They got rain here, but the last couple of days have been very pretty. And the football is in the possession of the Nebraska Cornhuskers just over the 15-yard line. First down with Quinn at quarterback. Franklin and Redwine set behind him out of the eye formation. Must be checking off, taking a long count at the line of scrimmage. Pitches the ball to Redwine. Pretty good defensive flow by the Oklahoma Sooners. Burkett, number five, uh, or rather Tayton, number five, is out there. The defensive end. Number 26 walking across there is Burkett. There's number five, the man that made the tackle out of Tulsa. Tayton was a quarterback in high school, Keith. It's been a good defensive end for him the last two years. Again, not all that big, Frank. 2-11, 6-4, though, rangy. Good quicks. Scott Woodard, 88, in now at a wide spot. For Nebraska, as Jeff Quinn brings him up. Second down and eight from the 17, out near the 18. Quinn still got it. Puts it up deep. Over the middle for Miller. Oh, my goodness, he almost salvaged it. He had to throw that football into the middle. He was out there. He was free. He had uh, six points in his pocket, but he has to throw this football into a pretty good little win, and it just simply didn't get there. Well, Miller is going to get behind the secondary because of the fake in the backfield. You can see that he has a two-step advantage, but the ball does hang, Keith, as you mentioned, into the win. Finally, Taylor comes back. Hebert comes over, and Miller nearly catches it. Watch. He has a chance to catch it and misses it. Oh, it is third down and eight. Quinn throws to Smith, and it's behind him. Tim was out there. He had found an open spot in the defensive secondary, but the ball was thrown behind him. And now Oklahoma is a sense to get the ball in good field position as Nebraska must punt into the win. This will be their first good field position, Keith. They started back on their own eight and ten yard line. Made some yards, couldn't sustain it, and had the punt. That's Basil Banks, number 17, the deep man. Third punt for Tim Smith. That's a good kick into that win. He makes Banks wave fair catch, but uh, there's too many people back there, and Basil decides to let it go, and it finally tumbles on out of bounds. All the way back at the 38-yard line of Oklahoma. That's a 44-yard punt. Next Saturday, this is what we'll have for you here on ABC as we present the final weekend of the regular season in college football, Pitt and Penn State. The Panthers trying to win their 10th, the Nittany Lions trying to win their 8th, both of them going to bowls, Pittsburgh to the Fiesta, Penn State to the Liberty, and then the traditional follows at 4 o'clock Eastern time, Army-Navy. Oklahoma comes up, ball at the 37-yard line, Billy Sims has the ball. Billy dives it across the 40 to the 41. Right now, let's spend a moment with Bill Fleming. A rather significant ball game going on today at Grant Field in Atlanta. Georgia Tech is leading Georgia 3 to nothing on a 43-yard field goal by John Smith. Now, the significance of this, of course, is that Georgia has said if they lose this game, they will not go to the Sugar Bowl, even though they would tie Alabama for the SEC lead. So we'll keep you up to date. 
they might. If Auburn beats Alabama. That one's played uh, next week. Ball is handed off inside to that young man, Stanley Wilson. Oh, he is quick coming off that snap. It looks like he's got an Oklahoma first down. Isn't he quick, Keith? Out, Oklahoma lined up in an unbalanced line. Talking to Barry Switzer yesterday, he said that we hurt Nebraska with this in the Orange Bowl, and we're going to use it a lot today, and he, they have and had success with it. Ball is up near the 49-yard line, and you can see time is just about gone in the first period of play. And there's big are. Junior Miller who almost had himself a touchdown. If that ball had just been a yard longer, he was gone. There goes Sims. Oh, he is some running back. Down to the 30-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. Lawrence Cole got him. Let's watch it. You'll see the blocking that Sam saw, but he's right in the line of scrimmage. Watch the two defensive men missing, the two linebackers. Now he's on open field because the safeties are up supporting the run. Find and Lindquist, number 15, helps on the tackle. 205 pounder. Strong guy. Quick. Time is run out. First quarter of play. And there is no score between Nebraska and Oklahoma. He's gone over 100. They give the ball off to the first man out of the wishbone, the fullback Wilson. And he runs it down to about the 27, just inside the 27-yard line. Those are just one score, very important score there. Florida, the Gators, who have yet to win this year, gave the Seminoles of Florida State all they wanted, but Florida State won the ball game late going, 27-16 to remain undefeated. And they're going to go play the winner of this ball game in the Orange Bowl. Been a great year for Bobby Bowden and his bunch of folks down in Tallahassee. Ball is given to Sims, and Sims dives it down to about the 21. He's going to be about a yard short of his first down. Just starting the second quarter of play. Keith, I know what Tom Osmond is going through trying to slow down the wishbone. When they get the momentum, the offensive line charging out, these backs are explosive, and they break into that secondary and score before you can turn around. I've been there, unfortunately, on the other side. Well, the rate he's going, uh, Sims is going, he's going to get have a bigger week than he had last week when he went for 282. He's got it again. He's trying for the first down. Just depends on how far they'll place the ball as he just stuck his head in that stack. One interesting figure. Nebraska has been allowing 62 yards per game rushing. Oklahoma rushed in the first quarter 140 yards. Time call by the referee, Dan Foley. He wants to bring the chains on because the ball is on the 20, but they had to go about six inches beyond the 20 for the first down. No score. Nebraska now has the wind advantage. Oh, so close. Well, you know they'll go. Keith, you remember last year, Let's look at the stats first. And the thing I just mentioned, 140 yards rushing by Oklahoma is more than twice what other teams have averaged for the entire game. Sims has 113 of that 140. <laughs> they scored on short yardage last year, remember, Keith? Yep. Fourth down, quarterback watch. Julius Caesar Watts dives in for the first down to about the 18-yard line. And now the Sooners continue their march, trying to get on the board. They had a touchdown wiped out by a clipping penalty, an inadvertent clip back in the first quarter when Sims had broken for 68 yards. The ball is put right at the 19. Street. Good play by number 66, Brent Williams, junior out of Los Angeles. He flowed defensively and stayed at home and got his man. Williams makes an outstanding play. Watch him because there's a fake inside of the fullback, and then he has the awareness to get outside, and he keeps leverage. The main thing for a linebacker is to keep leverage, don't overrun it, and he just goes head up with Overstreet and stops it. You saw Billy Sims out there had taken uh, that outside man for Nebraska out of the play, but Williams, as Frank said, filled it well. Here's Watts with the ball, turns it upfield. Gets inside the 20 to about the 19. 
So they recapture the original line of scrimmage, moving that one from the outside the 23. Keith, in looking at the Orange Bowl film of last year, Oklahoma ran on third and nine and ten, normally a passing down five times with Sims and made it all five times. Timeout is called by the University of Nebraska with 12.21 to go in the second quarter of play. Oklahoma's threatening, but we still have no score in the ball game. Third along. Fumble picked up by Watts. Fumbles it again, going to the sidelines. Penalty flags all over the field. Back at the 29-yard line, it was David Clark that busted the ball out of Billy Sims' grass. Then Watts chasing it. And it's a penalty against Nebraska, apparently. Keith, uh, all sides, I guess, has to be. It is not, however, going to be a first down. But now, Keith, it puts them back into the offense. Third and five is a wishbone play. Here's the, the fumble. Let's see if we can detect who knocks it loose. David Clark knocked it loose. David Clark, number 43, who had a brother play here last year. You can see Watts picked it up and then throws it down. All is nullified because... Now he batted the ball there. He that, batted the ball. That's a penalty. The officials did not catch it. That, Keith, I didn't see it either. But he did, didn't he? Yes, he did. He knocked it out of bounds. That is illegal. Let's watch it again. Keith, there he is. Couldn't. That isn't a swat. I've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good a thinking, J.C. <laughs> Ball is at the 14-yard line of Nebraska. Third down and five. Now the wishbone is back in their regular offense. Third and five is running for them. They usually will run twice. Let's look at the fumble story. Fumbles, Oklahoma, 31. All right, six-man front for the Huskers. Wilson goes in motion. Watts coming down the line. He is not going to get there. Matter of fact, he really didn't even get to the line of scrimmage as David Clark, the big junior out of Odessa, Texas, flowed with the play and made another big play. Kim Baker, 41, there to help out as well. So that big old 63 is playing up a storm. A little bit surprised, Keith, that they went wide on third and five rather than give it to Sims up the middle where they made most of their yardage. All right, here's Michael Keeling coming into the ball game now for a 31-yard field goal attempt. He's a freshman, barefooted kicker. He is four out of five from this distance, but you've got to add something here because of the wind. He's got it up, a lot of leg, and it's good. Well, he just nailed it. He sucked that thing all the way up into the crowd. 11.33 to go in the first half of play. Oklahoma gets on the board first to lead Nebraska, three to nothing. Actually, I think Nebraska's got to feel a little fortunate they got off that easily. Under the circumstances, Kenny Brown and Anthony Steeles are the deep men. And here's Michael Keeley to kick it off. Remember, Steeles broke the opening kickoff for 44 yards. So they'll probably be a little more aware of that young man as Keeling lines up to kick the ball from the near hash mark. Or if you look at it from the Nebraska point of view, he pops it straight up in the air. And it is fielded by Nebraska, picked up by number 44. That is Jim Katerra. And Katerra gives Nebraska very good field position after a very poor kickoff at their 43-yard line. Keith, I believe we can anticipate more passing in this quarter by Nebraska. Tom Osmond said he was coming in this game with the idea of throwing more than he had earlier. Now he has the win to his back. And keep in mind that Junior Miller is 6'4", 220-pound senior out of Midland, Texas. And he outsizes everybody in the Oklahoma secondary. I am hip now. He's back in at the eye back position for the Huskers. Quinn gives the ball off to Andrew Franklin, the fullback. And Franklin takes it from the 43 out near the 48. George got a part of five yards on the carry. Steve Gary. 48 yard line. Brown is out at the wingback position, and Tim McCrady, a junior from Plainview, Nebraska, is in. Nebraska runs that wingback counter a lot. Quinn hands the ball to Hip, and uh, I.M. 
he just sort of skated a little bit until something opened for him. He takes the ball to the Oklahoma 49-yard line. That's going to leave him a little more than a yard short. There are some scores. Look at here. Tulane headed for the Liberty Bowl against Penn State, leading LSU in the second quarter, 10 to nothing. Rock Hunter's having a big day, apparently. Georgia Tech in the second quarter, still leading Georgia 3 to nothing. Goal line defense set up on third and a yard and a half for Oklahoma. Hip has it, dives for it, and appears to have it. Well, I tell you, you're susceptible to a whack when you're up in there, aren't you? You can just get dismembered if you're not careful. All the tailbacks do it, though, Keith. They, yep. they lined up seven yards deep, and they have a chance to get the ball safely from the quarterback and take a step or two and then leap over the, in, the charging defensive linemen who are going underneath to try to stop it for no gain. You see Tim Smith, number 84, the offensive captain for the Cornhuskers, is there as the referee calls the chains onto the field to make sure of their decision. It's close. It is short. Well, in the first quarter on short yardage, Nebraska a kick at a pass was incomplete and forced to kick. I would certainly think, well, I'm not going to try to outguess anybody. I'm just going to wait and see. Not Tom Osmond for sure. No, sir. Fourth down. Quarterback. Well, he might have made it, but by golly, he didn't get it by much. He just sort of fell forward and he had his feet taken out from under him by the low defensive surge of Oklahoma. But it looks like they put it down at the 47 and if they have that is a first down. Well, they'll measure again. Keith, I think we should mention the offensive line of Nebraska is probably the most mature in the United States. They have four starters that are fifth year seniors and the other one is a fourth year junior. I don't know of any team in America that has that much experience in the offensive line. First down for the Cornhuskers. The ball is at the Oklahoma 47-yard line. See, he made it by about the length of the football. Kenny Brown goes to the top of the picture and out of the picture right now. He's to the open side of the field. They reverse it to Miller, Junior Miller, the tight end coming back on a reverse. Ball squirts out of bounds. He was high load. Jay Jimerson, 15, the man who took the legs from under him. Big Junior running a reverse. And that's later today. Brigham Young and San Diego State. That's for the Western Athletic Conference Championship and a position in the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. BYU with a great passing game, 10th in the nation. Only in Los Angeles will USC, UCLA be seen. At the 42-yard line, second down and the short five. Quinn pitches the ball to I.M. Hip. Hip spins it back inside. Number 28, George Cumbie, the linebacker, made him come back inside and uh, stopped him short. When you keep your eye on 28, watch the quickness of this man. He recognizes it's a sweep. He has to penetrate. He goes right through Franklin, the outstanding fullback of Nebraska and throws hip to the ground. Ball is short of the 40 at the 41. It's third down and four. Option. Hip. Franklin good block but he can't sustain the block. But it looks like hip gets the first down as he comes down to the 35. Sherwood Taylor from Ada, Oklahoma was the fellow that made the play. Hip had enough momentum and enough strength to pull his way for the first down. One thing that's interesting strategy-wise, Keith, is the fact that Oklahoma has double-covered their wide receivers on every, every down, which leaves Junior Miller wide open down the middle. They're trying to save him, I'm sure. Because he, but again, remember, he's a great big tall fellow with great agility, and he outsizes everybody in the defensive secondary. First down from the Oklahoma 35. Quinn still got it and got some daylight. I'll tell you, that's a pretty cute little play right there. It's good 
to just short of the 10 yard line. Now the faking of that quarterback was superb. Let's watch it again because you'll see it's the fake of the end around. You'll see Junior Miller coming right here. It's actually going to be a, a option play, but the open the middle opened up. Quinn improvised and goes right down the middle to the 10 yard line. That's Finally, he but number 32 for three brings it down. That's why he's in there at quarterback too, because he is a pretty good runner. Better than 200 pounds. It's just short of the 10 yard line as they send Jarvis Redwine in motion out of the eye back. He's got the ball. On to the corner. Touchdown, Cornhusker. that fella out there one on one and he is terrifying he runs into Sherwood Taylor right at the corner of the end zone and they give him six you can see that Quinn had a flood pattern and he chose his third receiver red line and he catches it and goes in for the touchdown Suka is in for the extra point try it is up and it is good with seven minutes and 36 seconds to play in the second quarter, the Cornhuskers of Nebraska has gone to the lead 7 to 3. It's a good play. Jarvis Redwine, who took the ball into the end zone, and that swing pass from the quarterback Quinn to give Nebraska a 7 to 3 lead, his first touchdown reception of the year. We're ready for the kickoff as Kevin Seibel will hit it from Vermillion, South Dakota, to Chet Winters, number 40, and Darrell Shepard, number 8. Kick. Shepard angles under it at the four. Almost fell down. He brings the ball back out across to the 20 yard line. Remember, Shepard was the widely heralded, much recruited fellow who went over to Houston and then came out of Houston up to here. And then I guess he still got the diamond in his tooth. And his brother played here, Keith. He was a running back. In fact, he's running through the pass. Woody Shepard, yes. yes. Against Nebraska that won the, won the game two years ago. I remember it vividly because it was so cold. I thought it was going <laughs> to never get out of my chair when it was over. It was a great football game. All right, here's Oklahoma now. Trailing in the ball game. The ball is given off to the fullback, Wilson. And Wilson from the 22-yard line bolts all the way out near the 30. Gained eight yards. He's got 40 now on six carries. There's the time remaining in the first half of play. Oklahoma is working into the wind. That's Wilson in motion. And Sim gets the first down as he moves the football to the 34 of Oklahoma. And let's find out what's going on down in Atlanta for Mr. Bill Fleming. Well, the Bulldogs have scored as Matt Simon carried it in from five yards out, climaxing a 51-yard drive, and so Georgia now leads Georgia Tech 7-3 to three with nine minutes and 50 seconds to go in that first half, Keith. Thank you. 34-yard line, first down sooner. Watch pass. Thrown out to Nixon. Nixon makes the catch at the 43-yard line, just short of the first down. On the isolation, we must remember that the wishbone is primarily a running team, so they single cover the wide receiver, and he goes on an out pattern. Means makes a good effort, gets there just about the time the ball does to bring him to the ground. Call it the 42-yard line. Six-man front defensively for Nebraska. The ball given to Sims, and Sims getting, again, very good blocking from the right side of the line. Breaks it out to the 48-yard line, and that will give Oklahoma another first down with 6.07 to go in the first half. Hey, that Culver and Key do quite a job over on that right side, don't they? And Valora, too, the tight end. He makes the key block. That's the toughest block on the second man through, the tight end on the defensive end. Fullback Wilson gets the ball down to the Nebraska 47 yard line. That's five, second down and five coming up. And that wishbone gets five yards on you on first down. You're in trouble. You are in trouble, Keith. And it's amazing. You, you, from up here, it appears that he doesn't make anything. Mm -hmm. And you look up, and he's got five yards because of the surge of the offensive line.
Sim. They'll mark him inside the 44 or just short of the 43 of Nebraska. Bring up third and short. Oklahoma. College football 7 to 9 with Bill Fleming will have highlights from those games. There are some important games at Bragging Rights especially, but that Baylor Texas game is a very important ball game, and so is SMU Arkansas. Both of uh, both Texas and Arkansas trying to stay in the conference race with Houston. Billy Sims now with 131 yards in the ball game. Watts going down on the option. Gets past the yard marker and gets another sooner first down as he gets inside. Well, they're going to mark him down at the four, but it is a first down for Oklahoma. Mr. Tabor working in the middle of the line there, snapping the ball and then moving folks around. Look at the block he makes. He's blocking Lee, 65, who actually was lined up on the play side, and he walls him off perfectly to keep him out of pursuit. By the way, his brother is Phil Tabor playing for the New York Giants. Defensive tackle. First down Sooners, Nebraska 40. Wilson, the fullback. Got three yards. Come on, oh. Oklahoma continues to hammer with their wishbone, Keith, but they do it with different formations. That time, they were an unbalanced line. The play before, they had the fullback in motion. The play before that, they shifted into the wingback formation, all trying to confuse the defensive assignments of Nebraska. Second down seven from the Husker 37. Wilson again. He broke one tackle and almost broke a second tackle. Number 15 finally brought him down at Rick Lindquist. Kim Baker was the man that had a hold of him the first time. One of the things that Tom Osborne has done with this Nebraska defensive unit this year, as defensive people have set it up, Lance Van Zandt, I guess, has a great deal to do with it, is they've played a lot of people defensively. They try to keep fresh people in there with Horn and Clark and Lee and Winemaster and Barnett and Pensick, Nelson Williams, Cole Lindstrom. They've all had a lot of playing time. Third down, two. Sims, whoop and over, it is close. Looks like the head linesman is gonna mark him right at the 30. If he does, that'll be a first down. Oklahoma had a good surge by the left side. Lewis Ubre, the left tackle, number 66, is an outstanding player. Oklahoma coaches feel he can be one of their very best. Dan Foley, the referee, has a flair, doesn't he? He makes you <laughs> wait for a moment, and then he gives it to you. That's tough on coaches. <laughs> Got to decide what, you, what are you going to do on fourth and one, or first and ten. Waiting for his call. <laughs> Second man over the street. David Overstreet is caught by Lindquist number 15 as he crosses the 25 to the 24. Tabor's winning the war down in the trenches right now in the middle. 65 is Otis Lee. Tabor 73 stands him up. That's all you're asking for on the wishbone because the play breaks so quickly, but Tabor has a little more. He turns him completely away from the play. Mr. Crouch 75 helped a little too. Second down and four. Sims breaks the first tackle and runs it down to the 21. Keith, how many times does Sims go down by the first defensive man that hits him? Not many. Not many. He is a combination, I think, of Dorsett and Campbell. He's just about as fast as Dorsett and shifty, and he's nearly as strong as Earl Campbell. That's some recommendation. Yep. No question, I think, that he and White, Charles White of Southern California, were the runaway early favorites in the Heisman voting. Probably when the totals are in, they will have the bulk of all the votes. On third down and very short, they go to Billy Sims, and he's at the Nebraska 19-yard line for an Oklahoma first down. So the Sooners trailing 7-3. to three. They're Just banging away and moving the ball. But the clock, Keith, is working against them. At three or four yards of whack, they will not score because there's only a minute and 35 seconds left in the second in quarter. They started back on their own 22-yard line in this possession. This will be the 15th play in that possession. Darrell Royal would love this drive, wouldn't he? He's yeah. had a mini one. 
Watts wants to put it up. Valora's there, and he missed him. That is tied in for us, Valora, all alone, and missed him. Keith, when you've got your end open for the touchdown, you've got to hit him. Watts did not wait long enough. He hurried the pass rather than lay it in there. Now the wishbone has to change their strategy. This close to the goal line. Second down and 10. Just short of the 19 at Nebraska. Huskers are leading 7 to 3, and you've got 120 to go in the first half. Outside the sim. Down he goes. Great play by 92. Gary Nelson from Fairmont, Nebraska. That was a heck of an open field. They need tackle. to call timeout very quickly. It's a triple option. You watch it, watch, fakes to the fullback, and he has to pitch by the safety, and the Ian Nelson supports the safety to the outside. Excellent play by Derry Nelson, number 92. Time called by Oklahoma, 105 to go in the first half. All right, Oklahoma has the ball back at the 25-yard line. It's third down. And 16. Billy Sims being hit in the open field by Derry Nelson. Bobby Grayson, man at the top of the picture. Watts back to throw. Yep. Going to run it. And he runs it to the 18-yard line before he is pulled down. That's if they call time here. We'll stop the clock. We're inside a minute to go now in the first half. Clock continues to roll along. It'll bring up third down and nine. Going for the field goal. Field goal. <laughs> now they call time. 39 seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma spends its last time out. And this is what we'll have for you at halftime with Bill Fleming. Right now, let's take you on a trip around the University of Nebraska campus. Barefooted freshman Michael Keeling is out now to try his second field goal. He hit one a little while ago from 31 yards for the first score in the ball game. Now he's going to try one from 34 yards. He's got it up. He's got enough leg. And he missed it. That's what that wind will do to you. It sort of swirls around. The ball got up there and hung, and the wind just kind of moved it right on out of the goal post. And so they are turned away from the field goal try. And it's 7-3 Nebraska with 34 seconds to go in the first half. That's coming up later today. BYU and San Diego State for the WAC championship. UCLA and USC game will be seen only in Los Angeles. And that's a, a special exception telecast for the home market only. USC and UCLA have been used in their permitted appearances already this season, which is why we can't show it to you across the country. First down from the 20 for Nebraska. Let's see if they want to run out the clock. They hand the ball off to, uh, to uh, uh, Jarvis, uh, uh, Jarvis Redwine. I don't get his name out <laughs> yet. And he gets up to about the 26. Interesting little thing here in this quarter, Nebraska had the ball three minutes and 57 seconds. They ran one series, nine plays for the touchdown. Oklahoma had the football 10 minutes and 24 seconds and ran off 26 plays. And Nebraska's leading 7-3. to three. Nebraska, when they got close, Keith, they were able to put it in the end zone. Oklahoma was not. Twice Oklahoma got deep. Both times they ran wide and were stopped for losses, forcing a field goal attempt. One successful, one not. Tom Osborne has a gimmick play. Look at two lanes doing LSU. Uh, the Tar Heels are going to the Gator Bowl, and they're leading the Blue Devils 7 to nothing. If Tom Osborne has a gimmick play, this might be a place to show it. 26 seconds to go. Wind at his back. Keith, he, he's the one that called the timeout, which means he's still got something up his sleeve, hoping to get a chance to score. Oklahoma defensive backs are lined up about 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. Go, go. They got time to run a couple. 26 seconds. Wynn's going to throw. Nope, has to pull it down. He looked downfield at uh, Kenny Brown. Number 22 had gone down there, but Brown got tangled up uh, with Jay Jemerson and uh, was taken out of the play by Jemerson, really. 
as they ran together and at that point Quinn pulled it down. 18 seconds now as the clock has stopped to move the change Quinn getting the first down up at the 35 yard line is now running with 13 seconds to go in the first half. He'll throw. He hums it over the middle it's picked off. He threw the ball in the crowd and Barry Burgett defensive end who had dropped into the secondary intercepts it and with four seconds to play Oklahoma gets one more shot at it. Here's Quinn dropping back. When you throw it against a defense that's stacked against the pass, you've got to be extremely careful. Throwing it down the middle, you can see Burgett, number 26, coming right in front of him. Beautiful interception, but only four seconds left on the clock. McGrady was the intended receiver. Looked like that ball might have sailed a little bit. He had him out there on, uh, in front. The ball sort of curled back inside. Four seconds remaining in the first half of play. Let's see if Barry Switzer's got something he can show us. Watts back to throw. Trying to throw. Now he's going to have to run. JC's got some open field. Now he gets in the air. Nixon's down there. Knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. And penalty flags thrown back up field in one of the great scrambles <laughs> of the month by J.C. Watts. How about That's, the year? <laughs> you can't end the half on a penalty, though, can you? If yes, it's against the defensive team, if you it, can. But if it's against the offensive team, let's see what they do. Against the offense, the half is over. Against yeah. the defense, defense no. Defense is not. Time is still out for Andy Means, and I must say that for, uh, from what we can tell here with glasses and our cameras, it appears that he has hurt the right knee and if that is the case goodness knows goodness knows how severe it might be Stanley Wilson suffered an ankle sprain which took him out of the ball game means involved in a saving tackle and was twisted as he made the tackle and as soon as he went down on the ground he reacted to the pain in that right leg and you can see how carefully they're handling it as he is taken from the field tough Courageous little football player at 5'11", 172 pounds from Holdridge, Nebraska. He's already had an interception to stop one Oklahoma thrust. What it means in this ball game is replacement has got to cover the wide receiver one on one on both sides. He flip flop with the wide receiver. A very tough assignment. And his replacement will be Dave Legal, a 5'9", 170 pound junior from Central City, Nebraska. And that's not all that big. The Oklahoma receivers, Valora, who your tight end is the biggest at 223. Nixon, however, is 5'11", 195. So he outsizes uh, that corner man. Ledbetter is now in at fullback for Oklahoma. And his first pop in there is good for about a yard. It'll be the New York Jets and the Seattle Seahawks Monday night on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football out of the Kingdom in Seattle. The Seahawks uh, battered by Los Angeles in that one game this season when they couldn't do anything, including tie their shoes, but they've been putting a lot of points on the board of late. Let's see if they're going to test this new defensive back. They break the bone here. Send uh, Overstreet in motion, and Watts is going to go with it. He's got Ballora out there all by himself. The tight end is gone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Gets out all alone, gets away from Paul Letcher, goes down and into the corner for the touchdown, and the Sooners are back on top, and Orange is being thrown out of the stands out on the field because the winner of this ball game will go to the Orange Bowl. I haven't seen anybody throwing cotton out on the field. I guess that's too expensive. <laughs> the team that loses this ball game will be going to the Cotton Bowl against the Southwest Conference champion. Mike Keeling, 30 out of 30 on his extra points in 1979, trying to make it a 10 to 7 ball game. He's got it. It's 
for 58 yards and a touchdown. The conversion is good. And at 10 minutes and 35 seconds to play in the third quarter, Oklahoma's back on top by a score of 10 to 7. And this time, J.C. Watts put it right on the money. Keith, I have seen the tight end open so many times. He blocks, he blocks, he blocks. Then all of a sudden, the safety man forgets about him, and he's open for the touchdown. The wishbone is an explosive offense. The defensive backs are committed to the run, and then on the very seldom used pass, they get caught out of position. Seven plays, 87 yards. Didn't take a lot of time with that one. 202. And Keeling now will kick off with Steels and Brown deep. Pops it up. That'll cost him five. He'll do it again. Keep the kickoff uh, coverage and the kicking. The kicker himself has hurt Oklahoma. Is given Nebraska field position after each of the kickoffs. Forrest Valora, many of you may remember, uh, before the Oklahoma Texas game, he was out warming up, running fast batters, and he ran into a cameraman's lens who was filming Barry Switzer's television show. Got a big cut over his left eye there, but it's long since healed, and obviously he's in fine fettle now. I asked Bourbon Johnson how much of a cut he had, Keith. He said an inch and a half long, and right. then came back and played the entire game. Because she did. All right, Keeling, who incidentally I remember in the Texas game, hit a pop fly in that one, too. Almost kicked it behind him. He did. <laughs> Michael tries it again. This time he gets it. And it's Kenny Brown from the five. And he gets out to the 23, where Nebraska will have the football. First down, Bud Hebert made the tackle for Oklahoma. It's an interesting story with Bud Hebert, one of the most highly recruited young men in the state of Texas, has started on three different occasions as a safety man for Oklahoma, but has been plagued with injuries. Now he's back starting for the first time this year. Fields goes wide. Jarvis Redwine, the eye back. Franklin at full, Quinn the quarter. Franklin out close to the 28 come be the tackle for Oklahoma We're going to isolate on 28 George Cumby all-american linebacker leading tackler you can see why he knows exactly where the ball is going to be and he has the ability to make the play he just holds on for dear life on Franklin mark him near the 27 second down and six Travis Redwine, the eye back, across the 30 to the 31. Bruce Tayton this time gets him. Nebraska has been in a too tight end offense, Keith, and what that means is that it restricts the number of defensive stunts that Oklahoma can use. It balances them out, gives them a chance to make a first down with power. They need two yards for that first down. that Oklahoma had 10 people up on that <laughs> defensive line and I'm not sure at all that uh, they were able to get the first down. Well Nebraska fumbled Keith. They did. All came loose I guess in the bottom of the stack. But it is still Nebraska's yes. possession and the chains are going to come on. One thing that Tom Osborne said before this game, he had to have some more mixture with his offense. Being able to throw the ball was going to be vital, and they've only completed two passes. Just short. You know, he is going for it right now. What a gamble. Well, one thing about him, he's a quiet man of considerable dignity. Okay. But I'll tell you this, 
He's the got the gizzard of a riverboat gambler. <laughs> he and has. Oklahoma calls timeout. Well, they see that Tom Osborne elects to go for fourth down deep in his own territory back at the 33 yard line. 9 10 to go in the third quarter. Sooners want to talk about this daring moment. First down, and they're going to gamble on fourth down. The well, reason Oklahoma called the timeout is actually they got caught with their punt receiving team, kick receiving team on the field. They wanted their big defensive bunch up there, and they got them all stuffed in the middle. As Quinn dives for his first down, he looks to me like he's got it. As he just fell in behind the wedge, he only needed about six inches. The story on Andy Means, who was taken from the field, the fine cornerback for Nebraska, the initial information from the doctor is that it is a possible fractured leg. We have sent a messenger into the dressing room to try to get as much definition for you as we can. But Andy is definitely suffering from a leg injury to the right leg. Whether it's knee or something else, we'll try to find out for you. Ball at the 34-yard line and a first down for the Cornhuskers. Boy, that was a considered risk. Oklahoma leading 10 to 7 as Gwen turns and gives to Franklin. He breaks it big. Andrew Franklin runs the football out near the 45-yard line. They'll mark it at the 44. Pretty good first down gain, Keith. Nearly 10. Andrew, Andrew Franklin has to be the most underrated player on the Nebraska squad. He's averaging over five yards a try from the fullback position, and he has 4'6 speed, 220 pounds. Jay Jimerson hobbles off the field, left leg hurting, ankle or something. Chains again are brought on. This is what, about the fifth or sixth measure that they've had in the ballgame, and it is a first down for Nebraska. Remember that Nebraska will have the win in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma leads at 10 to 7. And the clock shows 8.35 to go in the third period. Redwine. Tayton. Bruce Tayton penetrated and as Redwine tried to veer it to the outside. Bruce got him for a loss. One thing you don't want to do on first down on that style of play is bounce outside and take a loss. You want to get four yards running the power play. He had enough blocking. It looked like to make some yardage, but he chose to bounce outside. Bad decision. Loss of two. Temple leading Villanova there, as you see. Second down and 12. Ball back near the 42-yard line. Gwen stands up. Wanted to pop it. Now he's got to run it. And he gets it out to the 48. Barry Dipman, senior out of Houston, brought him down to Oklahoma. Here's the 49-yard line. He's third down six. Go ahead, Bill. With just four seconds to go in that first half, South Carolina scored 10 to 6. South Carolina bound for the Hall of Fame Bowl, and of course, Clemson bound for the Peach Bowl. That's quite a tussle today. And uh, in, that, uh, in that play that scored, it was a two yard pass climaxing the drive. Okay. It's third down and six for Nebraska. The ball out of their 48 yard line. Quinn gives it off inside, and the ball. Well, uh, let's go back and we'll show you this play. So you remember the Boomerowski a few years ago? Half cost wound up with a football. Now watch it. Watch a quarterback take it, puts it in there. He hands the ball, Keith, into the stomach of the offensive guard. He's running in the other direction. Obviously, our cameraman lost it. Everybody else So did, did I. <laughs> I knew the play was coming, and I still didn't see it. It's a first down for Nebraska at the 41-yard line. Quint, penalty flags on the field, goes deep. Junior Miller is in the end zone, and the ball is just tipped away by Basil Banks. Banks just tips it at the last second. The preceding play, the ball is handed off to the pulling offensive guard after being faked to the fullback that have crossed had it and got the first down. And now Nebraska is penalized. Keith, let's go back to that play a minute. Henry Franker was the backfield coach, if my memory was right, when I was about five years old. They ran that play against Alabama and I believe knocked Alabama out of the Rose Bowl. Vanderbilt was the team. 
Nothing new in football, we say, but coaches like Tom Osmond bring them back. So all of a sudden, by showing that play, Tom has opened up a whole new horizon for offensive guards. Ball is moved all the way back inside the 45-yard line, holding Paul against the Cornhuskers. Andy Means is now on his way to the hospital. They believe that he has a broken upper right leg. That's a really too bad. And Huskers are going to miss him in a lot of ways. It is first down. Back at the 45 of Nebraska. They've got to go near the Oklahoma 30 for their first down. Ball goes outside. Red wine's out there. Oh, was that a brilliant play by the quarterback Quinn? And he goes all the way down to the Oklahoma 26-yard line. I don't know how in the world you could run it any better than that. Quinn kept the ball to the last fraction of a second. It's down the line, often he does. He makes Tatum, number five, take him, and then Redwine breaks inside the block and makes a big game. Finally, number 31, Sherwood Taylor. Slows him down just enough for the others to make the play. Mark him down at the 25-yard line. First down for Nebraska. 30-yard pickup. Franklin the fullback. And he punches inside the 20 to the 19. He gets six. Now it looks to me like the offensive front of Nebraska is beginning to assert itself. It, it, it certainly is. Keith. Very definitely, the offensive line moved the defensive line of Oklahoma back, and Franklin came within one step of popping into the end zone. Second down four from the Oklahoma, 19. 11-51. Red line. There were a few licks hit down there that time, weren't they? He ran into a stack of red shirts. Ball is at the 18. It'll be third down and three. This is where Tom Osmond is at his best in calling plays on third and three with this much at stake. quarterback wants to throw now throws and throws at the crowd nobody open he only had two men really out of the pattern and there was double coverage over there and he had no chance at it Keith it was a play that has come in to introduce the football the last two years option play but throw to the tight to the split man break into the inside if he's open if not go ahead and run the option play Houston has made it famous but on that occasion Oklahoma had a defense perfectly our Dean Sukup is in for an extra for a field goal here, and uh, he's going into the win. So he's looking at a 35-yard attempt, but add something to it because of the win. Add an extra five yards to it because of the win. Low snap. The kick is up. The kick is long enough, and he missed it. Ball just slid outside the goalpost, and so Alaska is turned away. At 4:53 to go third quarter. And I've been thinking about the market lately. Uh, my broker says now's a good time to look into tax-free income. What's your broker say? Well, my broker's E.F. Hutton, and E.F. Hutton says... When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Marooned three years on a desert island, Alex Selkirk is back. Sir, what necessities did you lack? Uh, food, shelter. And the latest fashion. Yeah. Like uh, pleated Hager slacks. Or a Hager sport coat and slacks. Even a Hager vested suit. All the natural looking fabrics of today's day crime. And you look terrific. You're not so bad yourself. Back to you, Bill. Hager, because looking good makes you feel good. 
next explosive action as the nation's total offense leader, Mark Wilson, steers undefeated Brigham Young against San Diego State in a showdown for their conference title. All right, 4.53 to remaining in the third quarter of play. Nebraska working into the win, turned away on a missed field goal. Oklahoma's ball, first down at the 20. J.C. Watts gives the ball to Billy Sims. Billy Sims fumbles the ball. Nebraska falls on it, recovers it. And it does it is Mark Leroy, number 23, the senior from Seattle. The Sooners turn it over. That's the second turnover in the ball game. One thing that Oklahoma is always worried about, leaving it on the ground. Watch Sims. I think you'll see him break outside. The blocking one there. When he turned outside, he did not protect the football. Let's see if we can identify who knocks the ball loose. It just comes out of the pile somewhere. It was Lee. Looks like 65. The middle guard might have jerked it out of there. All right, red wine is the eye back. When turns, gives it to Brown. There's your wing back counter. And they don't get much out of it. From the 25, he got down to about the 23, 22. Cumbie was right there to mess up the play. Cumbie made a sensational play. Normally, he would have been pursuing with the flow of the tailback and been very vulnerable to the wing back trap, but he was right on the spot. Second down and eight from the 23. Big opportunity for the Cornhuskers. Pull back Franklin. To the 20. Next Saturday, we wind up the regular season with the Panthers of Pitt against the Lions of Penn State, 12:30 Eastern Time. And then the traditional from Philadelphia Army Navy at 4 Eastern Time. And we're all hoping that the good old weather will remain just like it's been all season. Good. A couple of years ago, we had a snowstorm and everything else. That Penn State win. It is third down and five for Nebraska at the 20. I am hip. Penalty flag. As hip is just nailed at the 19. Looks like a Nebraska penalty. One thing they did not need was a penalty which would probably take them right out of field goal range into the wind Keith and you said earlier the swirling wind at the south end of the field has been just disastrous on field goals well it could be if they refuse it it'll be fourth down at the 19 if it's a 15 yard penalty which they'll they've already it. given the signal I would guess they would take it and take them right out of field goal range Nebraska has had very little success passing which is not the trademark of the normal uh, Tom Austin coach team. Here comes the bad news for the Huskers. 5, 10, and 15. Here's numbers on passing. Jeff Quinn is two out of seven for 13 yards and one interception. And of course, J.C. Watts with a wishbone, four out of seven for 130 yards and one interception, one TD. Third and 20 from the 35 for Nebraska. Quinn swings it out. That's a forward pass. Red wine runs it to the sidelines. It was not a lateral. The ball was thrown forward. Keith, in a situation like this, early in the year, he replaced Quinn with Hager, and Hager brought him from behind against Iowa with a great effort. I think Hager may be the little bit better passer. Well, he had red one out there in a one-on-one -on -one circumstance where he could have picked up some. But got to get the ball first. Give a good, good effort to Oklahoma, plus the penalty. Mistakes stop you more than the opponents do. Smith to punt. Hangs it up and knocks it into the end zone. Oklahoma will get the football first down at the 20. 35-yard punt that went a little farther than Tim Smith wanted it to. So with 3.04 to play in the third quarter, the Sooners get the ball back, and they lead it 10-7. 
Following your late news tonight, ABC News will continue coverage of the Iranian crisis, day 21. ABC News has covered that story every night since it broke out, and we will continue to cover it until there is resolve. First down at the 20 for Oklahoma. Watts gives the ball. And over the left side of the line, they're just a bolt of lightning, comes David Overstreet, 192-pound junior out of Big Sandy, Texas. In talking to the Oklahoma coaches yesterday, they said that David Street was the leader on this football team. He's been making the sacrifice of doing mostly blocking for Billy Sims, and he has enjoyed his work. Give him seven, second down three, coming up for the Sooners. Billy spins it back, gets it up to about 30. I think they're going to mark him just short of 30, which will bring up. You know, Keith, uh, a great back like Sims, he cannot worry about the fumbling so much that he will lose his effectiveness as a run, as a runner. He's got to run with a reckless abandon and hope that he protects the ball. Third and short. Short meaning about three or four inches. Watts the quarterback. Oh, I don't know. Keithy did not make it if they spot it from where it looked up here. Clock running at 135 to go in the third quarter. Fourth down and that much. Oh, that's what they pay the head coach for. He's going to kick it away, and wisely so. Billy Sims standing out there on the field saying, no, no, no. But the coach says, yes. Oh, the one, feeling will punt. One game out, we were ahead 35 to nothing. Ran on fourth down. We had to recover. An onside kick was 35 to 29. <laughs> that was all in the fourth quarter after running on fourth down when the fans yelled. The kick is away, and it is fielded. And brought back by Dave Legal, a defensive back, who is playing in place of the injured Andy Means. He's back to about the 38-yard line. It was a 37-yard punt. And we have a little less than a minute to play in the third quarter. In recapping, Keith, the disappointing thing for both coaches must be their failure to finish their drives and put it in the end zone three times for Oklahoma, twice for Nebraska. And the Huskers had a big opportunity a moment ago on that fumble. Momentum should have been in their favor. They could have put it in. From the 38, first down. <laughs> Travis Redwine gets it up to the 41-yard line. Got a new fullback in there. Jim Cotera, number 44, junior out of Bellevue, Nebraska. Gain from the 38 to the 41. The Osborne years at Nebraska, I would say, have been fairly successful, wouldn't you? Yes, they have. 64 wins for Tom Oz, 65 wins in the six years up to this game. Cotera, the fullback, carries the ball. He's up to about the 44, close to the 45. They've got to go to the 48 for the first down. See the time expiring in the third quarter of play. And it'll wind on down. So we'll continue after this message for one of our sponsors and station identification. Another super value from Sears. We just got this 19-inch Sears color TV on sale for only $399.95. You save $60 and it's great. You just push a button to change channels. And it's got electronic tuning. With no moving parts to wear out? Automatic light sensor and one button color. I love it. For only $3.99.95, you can just push a button and goodbye, football. Sears, where America shops for value. Weekends were made for Nickelodeon. Weekends were made for special friends. It's the time to have that smooth and mellow. It's Michelob. 
weekends were made for special times. Weekends were made for Nickelodeon. Yeah. Tonight and every night while the crisis continues, stay with ABC News for late night special reports. Each time I rehearse for a ballet, it's a struggle. I spend almost every waking hour working, exercising, stretching, until my body wants to collapse. Trying to achieve perfection and knowing always my only competition is myself. United Bank of Denver. When it comes to business banking, we're our own competition. One day I'm heading out of Buffalo and my rig won't start up. So this guy comes along and asks me, do I want to jump? I had this big rig, but he had the go-getter. Ward's go-getter plus power. Ward's best. With more cranking power for more starting power. Without that, even a warranty can leave you out in the cold. Warranties don't start cars, batteries do. And the go-getter plus has the power to get you going. Even in Buffalo. Ward's, we do our best for you. Channel 9, KBTV, Denver. We go into the fourth quarter of play. In the ball game between Nebraska and Oklahoma, the Big 8 Conference Championship on the line. The winner goes to the Orange Bowl. The loser goes to the Cotton Bowl. Bragging rights worth who knows what. Nebraska third down and three from their own 44-yard line. It's a long three. 43 Red wine. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and Oklahoma came pouring in, Cumbie ripping through to lead the tacklers. Taylor, 31, the strong safety, had come up on a blitz, and he was exactly in the right place at the right time. And now Nebraska will punt. They do, however, have the wind at their back. Let's watch Cumbie, number 28. He recognizes the play, and on the sweep to the tailback, you have to penetrate. Oklahoma knew what was coming. Look at the red shirts there. Great effort by Oklahoma to stop the third down tip. And on the play, Jarvis Redwine is hurt. He is being assisted off the field. He is, however, walking. He's playing with a sore right leg. And that may have been where he was hurt this time. So that brings up a fourth down. Smith is in. He's punted uh, four times, an average of 36 yards. If the Huskers lose Redwine, that would really hurt him because he has proven himself in this traditional today. This man is Banks for Oklahoma. He's second in the nation, Keith. Good punt return. High kick. Banks will not have a chance. A fair catch is called for Oklahoma by Sherwood Taylor. The Sooners have the ball. First down, back around the 26-yard line after a 32-yard punt by Smith. Keith, they call the penalty on Banks coming over blocking late. I think it's a late block. It'll be first and 25. A terrible break. Unnecessary play on Banks. I'm not sure that he saw the call by Taylor for the fair catch. That's what's coming right after our game. BYU, the Cougars, and the San Diego State Aztecs. The winner of that game will go to the Holiday Bowl. And USC, UCLA in the Los Angeles market only. The home market of those two teams. So there, you're right, Frank, the big penalty. Let, watch Banks, number 17. After the ball is fair called, Banks is coming over and hit number 24 with his elbow right in the face after the play. Half the distance to the goal after the whistle had blown means it's first and 12, first and 20, I guess, or 22. Well, they finally put it down right at the 13th. Word on red wine, not knee, it's ankle. Slight twist, he says he'll play some more. The wishbone going into the wind, first and 22. They have to go wide or give the ball at least to Sims three times and try to get 10 yards a try. It's right at 24 yards for the first down. Pull back goes in motion. And the ball off inside. Billy Sims diving through there. Lawrence Cole is right there to bring him down. And here are your numbers after 45 minutes. Look at Oklahoma is still ahead in every category. 232 yards rushing. Nebraska had been allowing only 61 yards per game. The only 
statistic that Nebraska is ahead in time of possession, 23 to 21. This Oklahoma bunch, though, is <clears throat> not ordinary when it comes to running the football. Watts almost dropped that ball. Gets it off. Pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for Bobby Grayson. I thought number 28, Dave Legal, was pretty close to him as he was going down under it. But he, he did his job. He had him well covered. It was a good throw by Watts, who Barry Switzer tells me has the here he is on the post route and inside Grayson trying to get in behind the safety. The ball is a little bit long, thrown into the wind. You can see that uh, it was taking a perfect throw for, for a completion. Third down and about 22 yards for the first down. Get us in. Oh, he almost broke it out of there. Got it up across the 25 to the 26. Darren Nelson, the man that scoops his feet from under him. Keith, that was a big 15 yards because it uh, gives them that much better uh, chance to put Nebraska back in on their side of the 50 where they take possession. Sims now 160 yards in the ball game. Keeling is in to punt. No pressure. Beautiful kick. Kenny Brown. Down he goes. Oh, I'll tell you that was a kick. That was a 48-yard howitzer into the wind. Nebraska has the ball. Oklahoma leads 10 to 7. America, what's your favorite mid-sized four-door sedan? Chevy Malibu. And what's the thing you like best about Malibu? Everything. Everything? Everything. Well, we sure do like the mileage. The V6 engine, too. Like the ride and like the room. Like the value through and through. Like the styling, like the handling. Like the panoramic view. The thing we like is everything that makes a Malibu. The 1980 Malibu, America. A fresh new size of apple pie from Chevrolet to you. You know, this hat is the sign of one of America's largest, most important insurance companies, Fireman's Fund. But right now, we're going to beat the drums for a sign that's even more important to you. It belongs to the independent agents who sell our insurance, who choose from several companies to find the best policy and price. So look for the sign of the independent agents. They work for you to beat the band. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. America's Cindy Nelson, downhill bronze medalist at Innsbruck, races for gold this February in the 1980 Winter Olympics, exclusively on ABC. 13 minutes and 5 seconds to play in the football game at Owen Field. Oklahoma 10, Nebraska 7. Nebraska has the ball after that 48-yard punt by Keeling at their own 24-yard line. I'm hip. Is the eye back? Franklin the fullback, Quinn the quarterback. Quinn to throw it. Over the middle it goes, and the pass is incomplete, almost intercepted. He was trying to get the ball to Junior Miller. Miller was out there. I think his mistake, if he did make a mistake, uh, Frank, was that he tried to rope it instead of looping it. He was open momentarily, as you said. He held the ball just a little bit too long also. He should have, if he laid it right over, Cumbick would have been a completion. Let's watch it again. Right, he's, Miller's right down the middle. You can see he was open momentarily. Quinn held it just a second too long. Second down and 10 from the 24. Put it up again. Pass is complete to the fullback Franklin out of the backfield and he's got a first down. Andrew gets up to about the 37, 38 yard line, a 14 yard pickup. Give credit to Quinn because he was trying to look for Miller on the crossing pattern and he was covered. So he went to his safety or outlet man, Frank Franklin and made the first down. They're using uh, Miller and Jeff Finn. Finn is 6'5", 230 out of Grand Island. Miller 6'4", 222. First down, Huskers. Fullback Franklin. A quick pop up the middle, good to about the 41. Here's Bill Fleming. 
Well, the Bulldogs now have extended their lead to 13 to three on a 38 yard field goal by Rex Robinson. That's his second of the ball game. So the Bulldogs in that annual tussle against Georgia Tech leading 13 to three. That ball game, incidentally, is just one minute into the final period. At the 41 yard line, second down and seven for Nebraska. Quinn getting some pressure. Loses the ball. It is covered. Mark Goodspeed, who was back there trying to protect on the play, covered it. Bruce Tatum was the man that came flying through there. Number five, watch him. He, Bruce Tatum coming from the left of your screen. That's 92. Gary's in there. Yeah. Yes, uh, Gary first, but uh, Tatum, number five, coming from the back side, has nine sacks for the year. Ball just laying there, and finally, good to be recognized, recovers it. Second time the Nebraska quarterback has been down behind the line of scrimmage. Total loss of 21 yards. Third down, and about 16. Win on an option. Goes outside. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he delayed just a little bit too long, and you know who was up in there to almost create havoc for Nebraska was Basil Banks. Didn't he, didn't he make a sensational play? Corner support like that against the option play destroys any chance of success. Oscars have to kick again. 10.50 to play in the ball game. Oklahoma gets the ball back, leading 10 to 7. Banks the deep man to receive the punt from Smith. This time, 10 hits a beauty. Oh, look at this. It's down. Inside the 10 at the four yard line. Tim McCready hustling downfield. They got a favorable bounce. Oklahoma has the ball in very poor field position, but they still lead by three. To open a door on the rest of the world and step out, falling free two miles straight down. You go for it. You go for all the gusto you can get. Making the most of now. From the life you live to the beer you drink. Schlitz, the one beer brewed with gusto since 1849. The official beer of the Winter Olympics. Go for it. Here's an exciting Radio Shack gift idea. Space Patrol walkie-talkies. Christmas favorite for over 15 years. Okay, TJ, I'll meet you. Everyone. Real two-way radios for outdoor fun and adventure. Two different models, each with Morse code key. This one has a built-in AM radio. Let your kids join over three million delighted Space Patrol owners with a gift price walkie-talkie. That's just $9.95 and $14.95 each. Only at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. In the Big 8 Conference, academics and athletics go hand in hand. The conference has produced 38 academic All-Americans during the 1970s and eight NCAA postgraduate fellowship winners. This year, the University of Nebraska heads the academic all-conference team with nine members. Tonight, as part of our ABC News weekend presentation, we will continue to keep you abreast of what's happening in the Iranian crisis. And every night, as long as the situation in Iran remains critical, ABC News will bring you special reports immediately following your late local news. Over the weekend, we'll stay on the story as we have from the beginning as part of the weekend news. Then the specials resume on Monday at 11.30 following your local news or 10.30. Right now it is Oklahoma backed up on the six yard line and give the ball to Overstreet and David breaks it out to the 18 for a first down. Russell Gary finally got him. And he saved the touchdown. Keith. Overstreet was gone had uh, Gary missed the play. Number 92 is hobbling off the field for Nebraska. That's Gary Nelson. He's being replaced by Jimmy Williams. There are other scores from around the country. Right now, we have 10 minutes and 29 seconds remaining in this ball game. Oklahoma leading 10 to 7. First down at the 19. Wilson, the fullback, to the 20. Maybe just beyond. Keith, uh, I would expect that 
Nebraska will elect to gamble on defense now with the situation such they've got to get a loss or a fumble and or stop them back here on this part of the field and get good field position after the punt. I'm kind of wondering if we're going to see Tim Hager. He was taking some snaps and warming up a while ago, but he is now stopped. A quarterback for Nebraska in the next possession. Dennis Sims. Look out. It's a foot race. All the way to the Nebraska eight-yard line. Billy Sims. Seventy-one yards. Twenty-four carries for Billy. Two hundred thirty-one yards. And he deserves a rest. He... Gosh, what a run. I think he may be more winded than anything else. He's staying on the ground. Barry Schwitzer has come over to help, and I believe I'd help him up if I was the coach. Let's watch it again. It's just a base isolation play, but when you have the ability of Sims, watch him. He just goes by people. It's a mismatch in the secondary. Now he's on the open field. Finally, one Nebraska player, 29, tries to get him down, and he can't do it. Finally, I guess Russell Gary brings him down. Number nine. It's first and goal to go. Oklahoma at the Nebraska eight yard line. Over Street has it and didn't get an inch. Here comes Billy. Chet Winters in for the one play. Sims is coming back into the lineup now. He got himself a little win. Look at that. At 282 last week. Nebraska happens to be the top defensive football team against the rush in America. 61 yards per game, and Sims has done what he nearly four times. Don Key, offensive guard shaking on the play. Big freshman out of Pasadena, Texas. He goes out of the ball game. James Carter is in. I'm sure all across the country, people are beginning to talk about Billy Sims versus Charles White. From the nine, quarterback watch to Sims. Fumbles the ball. They're going to put it down right there. Keith, that's one of the toughest calls in football. When you fall and, and the ball and your body touch the ground at the same time, the ball is dead, even though it bounces out. Let's watch this call. It's common, to, and it's the usual call. It looks a little bit tough, though. Wilson is hurt on the sidelines, uh, or is it Sims? No. Watch Sims has the ball in his arm, and when he falls, it comes out, but since he is down, it remains Oklahoma's ball. It's a very Sims. questionable call, but that's the way it's supposed to be called. Well, Billy got up very slowly that time. Yeah, he's walking back. Let's see if he goes out of the game. Let's see it from another angle. You can see Sims. He's just going to run over Gary. <laughs> Dive for extra yardage, and he's got the ball in one arm. It could have popped out, Keith. What do you think? Before he touched the ground. But yeah, then, I don't know. It's one of those judgment academic. things. Yep. Okay. Winters is in, replacing Sims. And here comes Watts. Behind the line of scrimmage, they had him, but he wiggled away and got it back up to about the three. And that's going to bring up fourth down and goal to go. Keep that Nebraska defense has just risen to the occasion, as we say, just with a sensational effort to stop Oklahoma after Billy Sims' long run. What about uh, the tie in this ball game? Well, 
We have a 10-7 game. The Sooners lead 7.59 to play, and we'll talk about the tie coming back. All right, time is back in. The Oklahoma coaching staff, Barry Switzer's changed his mind. He's going to go for it. Keeling was on the field, thinking field goal. Then they, during the timeout, said, nope, we're going to go for it. Now, about the tie. If this game winds up in a tie, these two teams tie for the conference championship, it is the Orange Bowl committee that makes the decision which team that goes. Watch for the ball. Turns it. Touchdown. He's already signaled the fumble is academic. impressed with that drive of 94 yards seven plays of course that heroic run by Billy Sims so big in it Keeling's extra point is good no passing by Nebraska has made the difference Craig Johnson is one of the deep receivers now along with Anthony Steeles to accept the kickoff from uh, Michael Keeling now Johnson is number 30. Now it's important that Keeling get his foot on the ball this time. Remember, he's hit two pop ups today, very short. Gets it well. Steele has to let it bounce because of the wind. Now he's got it. He is nailed by a surging, fired-up Oklahoma defensive unit. The special teams bunched downfield in a hurry, and Boyce Coleman got him. Now, Keith, look, looking at the strategy, oh, uh, Nebraska has got to get them and get yardage in big chunks. They're going to have to do some fancy things. Oklahoma will more than likely come out of their goal line defense is what they've played so far in this ball game. The ball is at the 14, just beyond the 14 for the Huskers. First down, 17 to 7 ball game Sooners. Quinn stands up, throws that little pop to that big tight end, Junior Miller, and he carries people as he goes to the 38 yard line for a first down. What a horse. Yes. This is a tight pass that hurts blitzing linebackers to the tight end just over the linebacker in front of the safety. Sherwood Taylor, number 31, finally rides him down. Watch Miller, number 89, one of the very great athletes in America. He gets open away from Tatum. The ball is right on target, and T Taylor brings it back. Back to live action as the pass is thrown short, intended for Tim Smith. Craig Johnson is now your eye back with uh, red wine down with a sprained ankle. And Johnson had one big ball game himself this year. He came in and played up a storm for him. Seven minutes and 29 seconds to play in a game. Second and 10 from the 38. Quinn. Puts it up to the sidelines, pass complete, McCready, first down, the ball is at the Oklahoma 47. That's a tough little play too, isn't it? Yeah. Good execution by Quinn, the quarterback. Babb was fooled and he was wide open. Bill? Uh, just a moment here, Keith. In the Southwest Conference, Texas now leading Baylor 7-0. They started their freshman today at quarterback, Tim McIver, and he came up with a 45-yard touchdown pass. Yes, sir. First down, Nebraska. Got to get a touchdown in a hurry. Give the ball to Craig Johnson, and Johnson is down to the 42-yard line. He got the better part of five on that carry. See time now, definite ally of Oklahoma. Johnson has rushed for 526 yards as the third-string tailback, Keith, at 5.7-yard average. There's Billy. Second down, call it six. Quarterback Quinn still has it. He is 
shirt tailed and dragged down by Darrell Irvin, senior out of Pahuska, Oklahoma. The ball rolled out of bounds. And Nebraska retains possession, and they are short of the first down. The ball is put down to 39. A&M out to a 2-0 lead over Texas Christian down in the Southwest Conference. I guess insofar as uh, the West is concerned, there are really two bowl games out there today, aren't there? USC UCLA and the BYU San Diego State. BYU San Diego State seen over many of these ABC stations following this telecast. Quinn on third down and two, throws the ball to the sidelines, pass complete, first down deep in Oklahoma territory to Tim Smith. 28 yards on the pass and reception. Watch Quinn hold the ball until Smith is in behind the secondary. Now let's watch the isolation on Smith. He goes in, he's double covered. First, you're going to see the quarterback release him to number 31, Taylor, and Taylor didn't have the speed to get over and cover to the boundary. They have put the football at the 11-yard line, just short of it. Time is called right here. Oklahoma, timeout. They don't have any left. We have 5.58 to play in the game. The Sooners lead by 10. What does he do? Does he go for two where a field goal could give him a possible victory? Or does he take the sure point? There's another man who's weighted down with some decision making. First down, Nebraska at the Oklahoma 11. They send Johnson in motion, give it to Franklin, the fullback, and he runs it down to about the seven. That's four yards. It's an excellent call on first down. Give the ball right up the middle and establish short yardage for third and fourth down. Second down and six from the seven. Put it up. Going to get sacked. Back at the 15 by Sherwood Taylor, the blitzing safety. What, what can you say, Keith? The safety man coming on the blitz is uh, he failed to pick him up. You can see him coming out the backside, knocks Quinn to the ground for a big loss. He had a chance to unload it, but yes, he did. chose not to. The 15-yard line now, third down. Ball is given off to have uh, to the other guard, Schlossner, <laughs> and Schlossner scores. This time it is Schlossner, the other guard, getting the handoff from the quarterback. And how do you do, Randy's in the record book. That is a sensational call, Keith. I don't ever remember anything so dramatic. Well, they put this one on the ground. Instead of handing it to him, they laid this one down. Well, that fooled everyone in, in the stadium and also the Oklahoma team. Now, the fans don't know what happened. Well, I can tell you what happened. Randy Schlossner just scored a touchdown. You don't think he won't tell the grandchildren <laughs> about that. Four minutes and 43 seconds to play in the game. And they'll go for one. Sukup's kick is good. Now comes decision time. Does Nebraska kick it deep, or do they try the onside kick? But let's go back to the play now. Now, the big guy on the right side of the quarterback, when he raises up, you'll see his number, number 53. Now, Quinn takes the snap, turns around. There goes the fullback by him. Ball is down on the ground. See it? He just it, it, left it laying there, and it's picked up by Schlossner, and he's on his way to a touchdown. That our boy, big guy. I love to see those big dudes in the trenches get some <laughs> moments like that. Keith, that's the most dramatic call I think I've seen in a long, long time. With so much at stake, third down, and what was it, third and 15? Wow. This is the big decision, as you mentioned. Will he kick, kick deep to Oklahoma, and with their offense having so much success, be able to keep possession, or will he go for the onside kick? Oklahoma is, is expecting the onside kick. Kick 
Kicks it deep. And I do mean deep. <laughs> Into the crowd. Let's go back and look at that touchdown now. They just look at this thing. It's in, it's. I'm just startled by it, but I knew he had it in his playbook. The quarterback is it. going to put the ball right on the ground. You can see it, and you can see Randy pick the ball up, and he is, everyone is fooled. The blocking has been excellent on the left, and there he goes, Keith. Number 53, Randy Schlossinger. Schleusner. Schleusner. Mit einem Umlaut. <laughs> I'll get that correctly. He deserves it. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, J.C. Watts turns and gives the ball to Billy Sims, and he cracks it out for about five yards on first down. Now you can bet your bottom dollar that Barry has told Billy Sims, hold on to the football, run for four yards. If you can get more, fine, but get at least four. I nobody did. There's the big guy that scored. Second down and about five, a little more than that. Fullback dives, got a yard. It'll be third and four. And here's the play where the Husker defense now needs to pull its chin strap pretty tight. Yes, and they have been in a goal line defense. Expecting, of course, that uh, Oklahoma will elect to use their straight wishbone. They have. Now the big decision, the moment of decision. J.C. Watts, they get him. Oklahoma will have to punt it. It was Lawrence Cole who made the play. And I want to tell you a sensational play, Keith. He had the pitch and then turned back and tackled the quarterback short of a first down. Well, this is sort of the kind of thing we expected, right down to the last moment. Keeling. Gets it off. Good kick. Ball is fielded by Dave Legal. And it's going to be just inside the 30. First down, Nebraska. Two minutes, 59 seconds to play in the ball game. Chris Schenkel and Dave Diles, Prudential College School Board, coming up right after this ball game. And then we'll have, for most of the country, Brigham Young and San Diego State for Los Angeles only, USC-UCLA. That's a special exception telecast. UCLA and USC having appeared twice previously on our presentations of NCAA football. Can't go back on the network a third time because their appearances have been used up. Jeff Quinn on a roll, got room. And he gets it to the 35. George Cumbie again for Oklahoma. Cumbie is just all over the field, Keith. He tries to get involved in every play and just about accomplishes it. Well, they've got to put the ball in the air, approaching two minutes. Second down four from the 35. Quinn still got it. This time, number 38, Dittman, and number five, Tayton, are not fooled. That was a play that Quinn ran to set up the Nebraska first touchdown, fake of the end of the round, and then bootleg the ball up the middle. Now, time called by Nebraska. Third down and a short two with 2.03 to play in the ball game. 38-yard line. Third down, they actually need a little less than two yards to keep the football or else face a crucial, critical, heart-stopping fourth down. And Babb stepped right in front of the intended receiver. And with a minute 56 seconds to play in a ball game, that just might do it. 
Let's watch it again because Quinn should not have thrown the ball. It was a fake bootleg. Humphrey forces him out of the pocket. And then Garrett forces him, and he throws the ball under duress. He throws it right to Babb, number 14. So we'll take a moment to scoop the oranges off the field, and we'll get on with it. Now all the Sooners have to do is pick up a first down and chew up the clock. They give it to Sims, and Sims dives. And he moves from his own 49 for a couple of yards to the Nebraska 49. Nebraska has to get in a goal line defense, try to penetrate, and disrupt the backfield timing and possibly cause a fumble. Let's spend a moment with Bill. And a late score in now. Georgia with its third field goal by Rex Robinson has gone out in front of Georgia Tech 16 to 3. That, of course, puts a lot of heat on the Crimson Tide of Alabama. They must beat Auburn next week in order to go to the Sugar Bowl. If Auburn beats Alabama, then Georgia and Alabama would tie, and Georgia would go into the Sugar Bowl. So Georgia looks like it's on its way to winning a big one here today over Georgia Tech. Keith? There's Mark Leroy hobbling off the field. Second down, eight. Oklahoma with a minute 20 to play in the game. They're just trying to grind it out, get a first down. If they can get one first down, they can run out the clock. Nebraska has two timeouts left, and they just used one of those. Our most valuable players in today's game for Nebraska, defensive back Andy Means, who has been taken off to the hospital to check. They think he might have a broken right leg. For Oklahoma, Billy Sims, who carried 27 times for 244 yards, including a remarkable run that gave the Sooners their 17 points, the seventh time he's gone over 200 yards in his career in a game. So the respective universities of Oklahoma and Nebraska will receive from Chevrolet in the names of those players $1,000 each for their general scholarship fund. The amazing thing in this ball game, I think, is the way Oklahoma has run the football against this Nebraska defense. That has to be the difference if they go ahead and win. And particularly in the second half. Third down, four. Sims. Well, he didn't get his first down. Now, 108. 105. It'll be fourth down in a yard. Time is called by Nebraska. There he is. That's their last time out. Fourth and one for Oklahoma with 101 to play. Oklahoma has decided to punt the football. Nebraska obviously is going to send everybody. Oklahoma's instructions, Merv Johnson, line coach, you can hear him a moment ago saying, just make sure nobody gets through. There's some pressure, the kick is away into the end zone. It hits there and ricochets off the field of play, stopping the clock at 54 seconds to play in the game. 54 seconds for Nebraska to do something. Steve Michael Keeling has done an outstanding job of punting Four punts for 41 yard average. Some of those into the win in very difficult situations. Up they come with Jeff Quinn at quarterback. Straight back. Good protection, throws it deep. Miller's out there. Miller can't get to it. Defending Mike Babb. Bruce pass into the Virginia Miller incomplete. Mike Babb defending. It'll be second down and 10 from the 20 for Nebraska. Executive producer of NCAA College Football, Rune Erling. Coverage of today's game between Oklahoma and Nebraska produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, our associate director, Ben Harvey. Research by Jerry Klein, stats by Mike Swanson. 48 seconds to play. Swing pass. 
to Jarvis Redwine. Good for two yards. Nebraska having called two plays in the huddle, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma taking their time. Oklahoma very deep, defending against a deep pass, hoping they throw the ball short. 25 seconds to play. Pass to the sidelines to Andrew Franklin. It is good up to the 27. It'll bring up fourth down and three. 14 seconds to play in the game. If there is no change, Oklahoma wins the Big A championship, goes to the Orange Bowl to play Florida State. Nebraska goes to the Cotton Bowl to play the Southwest Conference champion. That could very well be Arkansas. and three. Pass is incomplete. Tate deflected it. And with nine seconds to play in the ball game, all Oklahoma has to do is take one snap and the game is over. Give much credit to the Oklahoma defense, too, Keith. Yes, sir. Nebraska has an outstanding offense. Very young football team, and that's what Billy Sims has done in the last two games. And two games that the toughest on Oklahoma schedule, with the exception of Texas. Right. Missouri, 282 yards, his highest total of his career. Well, he, as I said earlier, it's not the Heisman votes are not all in. snap that's all they need that'll do it penalty flag goes down that'll stop the clock as we've got a little ruckus breaking out frustration it's been a hard tough meaningful football game with so much at stake this game every year Keith has so much at stake we've talked about it earlier the pressure on the coaches the players is just tremendous well, 32 out of 34 times last 34 years. Nebraska and Oklahoma have either won or shared this conference championship. 32 out of 34 years. As Perry, hadn't he done a great job? 72 wins now and seven losses since he took over as head coach. Is he happy? Do that. The officials uh, have now admonished both teams for letting temper become a part of the closing moments of what has been a great college football game. They don't have to snap the clock uh, ball, Keith. They're supposed to start the clock on penalties this year after a penalty. He should wind the clock and... Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to snap. Now he winds it and it's going. Well, they, they started late with the clock, but now it's academic. The football game is over. Miami, here comes Oklahoma. Dallas, here comes Nebraska. So Billy Sims closes out his college career at Oklahoma with a magnificent performance against one of the best football teams in this country, old rival, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I believe that may have been the most spectacular effort by one player I've seen in a long, long time. That 170-yard run, 71-yard run he made was just incredible. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii.